Tough to lose them. Uh, obviously, uh, praying for Karen and Johnny and Ryan and the rest of their family. But um, my junior year in, high, in college uh, wasn't living up to uh, anyone's standards. And uh, I get a call, and it's Jerry. And uh, a lot of expli explicatives, but essentially told me that I was uh, an F up and was ruining an opportunity to be great at something and just, you know, just let me have it for like 10, 15 minutes. And I thought it was one of the most impactful phone calls uh, that I had really in my life. And um, stayed at his house once and overslept for UCLA Open Gym and went down for breakfast and got another ass chewing. Uh, because I wasn't being competitive enough. And so, you know, I think I remember about him is like, he had a tough way of showing that he loved you, uh, but he was super, super competitive and he really, really cared about you. And uh, he showed it in a way that like, kind of spoke to my language. So uh, he'll be missed and praying for the family. Standing in the back left, Tim. Uh, Joe, just uh, obviously you guys announced that Chris Stapps is not able to go to gay. Uh, is there any indication of whether that means anything beyond today or are you still taking that as a day-by-day -day approach no team? just day-to-day -day. uh just the medical team and uh the staff just decided that it wasn't what's best for him uh to be to go tonight so it'll just be a day-to-day -day thing see how he is uh tomorrow and then you know the next day and obviously you guys have had a lot of success in the playoffs without him or used to playing without him what are the challenges that are now presented without having him against this dallas team tonight uh yeah i mean he obviously you saw in the first two games his rim protection uh his ability to space the floor but you know i think the thing that uh has prepared us this year is our depth uh it, it just looks different so the uh, uh the guys ready to step in uh can do different things and have a positive impact which they've done and so we just have to rely on that any other questions here for coach uh dan over here on the left Stan. yep yeah, joe just how much do you feel for chris stops with you know how hard he's battled to get back, and then he has this mishap, and you know, you know he wants to go out there and yeah. play. Yeah, listen, uh, it's tough, but I have appreciated just uh, his approach. Uh, you know, throughout the whole playoffs, he's uh, like I said, he's never missed any meeting. He's always been out there, uh, done everything he can to to play. And sometimes it's just it's an unfortunate situation. It's nothing that he could do. So uh, definitely feel for him, but appreciate kind of where he's at, and uh, I trust that he'll do everything he can to get ready. You know, for the next game. Standing on the right side over here, Adam. He said to us last night, like, if it's his call at all, he's playing, but he's leaving it. You guys can take it out of his hands, basically. Was that how it happened, and what was kind of the process throughout the day where you guys realized he wasn't going to go, and how was that final determination made? KP, you're not playing. He didn't look right. You know, that was it. I mean, I wasn't involved in it, but that's what, like you said, it was uh, out of his hands. It was up to the medical team. They, they watched him uh, kind of go through some testing, and they just said it didn't feel right. So you're not playing. Uh, let's get ready for tomorrow and hopefully the next day. Back left, fifth row. Coach, uh, you seem yeah. right here. Yeah. You, you seem to be very inspired by the game of, of soccer. Uh, I'm just curious, like, um, how did you first learn about it? Like, did you play the game yourself when you were like y younger? Yeah, I did. Uh, what position? Uh, a little bit everywhere. I mean, it's, when you're not that good, they just throw you around in a bunch of different places, see where you stick. And what did you? What do you love most about it? Uh, I mean, a lot of stuff. I think uh, it's, you know, just the beauty of the game, the flow of the game. Uh, you know, I think when you have, uh, it's different. Like, soccer is much different than the game of basketball, where a basketball star is only defined by, like, scoring. Soccer, you have to really pay attention to the game to recognize the impact that each individual player is doing because points aren't at a premium, and each guy in the right position has a direct impact on the guy in the next position. And so greatness, you actually have to pay attention to it and look for it, whereas in basketball, you can just look at a stat sheet and, say, oh, it must have been this guy that played really well. And so really the depths to which you have to go to understand uh, the you know, greatness and the complexity and um, you know, the beauty and the connectivity that goes into to playing the game. Back right, sixth row. Uh, Joe, you mentioned testing specifically as best you can. Can you describe what Chris Tapps was asked to do and how close he uh, was? To I, w I wasn't out there. I have no idea. What other details might they have shared then? Zero. Dan on the left side, standing up. Coach uh, Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Guys like Luke and O'Shea and uh, Xavier, do you have any kind of different conversation with them when, it's, when you find out like it, where it's definitely a no-go on KP, or is it kind of like the same steady messaging? Uh, it's the same steady messaging. Also, you want to give them the best uh, preparation you can as far as what the sub-pattern might be and what the, the if-then scenarios will be. So you go over a couple of those with them. But for the most part, it's uh, the work that those guys have been doing leading up to this point and the kind of the conversations with their individual coaches, which have gone really well. So, um, you know, I just trust the work that they put in. John here in the front. Joe, you've done this most of the season or all season, really, 
but the past couple of days you've really been louder in fighting the narratives and what the perception of what's a good performance and kind of what people perceive. Why is it so important for you to fight that as loudly as you are? Um, I mean, I think I've been, the questions have allowed me to fight that. I don't think I've gone out of my way to do it. I think that you guys have asked really good questions based on that. So uh, I've been able to take the question you guys ask and, and uh, give my perspective on it. And so I think at the end of the day, like you, it's about our team and it's about uh, putting the guys in the best possible position to succeed and having to understand that our guys are going out there and doing the, everything that they can as a team uh, and why that's so important to long-term success. And I think that's what we're trying to uh, achieve as an organization, but it doesn't happen unless the players decide to do it and they're doing it and you can't let that go unnoticed, you know? Right here in the center, just raise your hand. There we go. Hey Joe, the guys have been talking about how uh, you have this philosophy of, you know, when you're the closest to winning, it's also when you're the closest to losing. Um, can you tell us where that comes from and also how you've been trying to impart it as you guys are up to school? Yeah, like if you've ever been in a fight with someone and you think you're about to beat them, you usually get sucker punched. And so, the closer you are to thinking you're going to beat them up, the closer you are to losing. You also mentioned that you've like spliced some UFC fights on that note into uh, I mean film the sessions. The closer you think you're going to submit someone is usually when you get right. submitted. Yeah, is there a fight in particular that uh, like that you put in? There's a lot of them. I mean, uh, usually every single fight, but um, I think it was uh, 302. Guy gets hit in the nuts, complains of the ref, and complains of the referee, gets distracted, and then he gets, you know, choked out the next round, you know, so he lost his focus. You see Pereira gets hit in the nuts, looks at the referee, knocks the guy out five seconds later. So it's the approach uh, to what happens to you and how you handle it. But the closer you think you are to beating someone, the closer you are to getting your ass kicked. And, you know, tonight I expect the best out of Dallas, and we got to be ready for a fight. Thank you, Coach.